Thank you, Jim. Saw a name there I didn't recognize. Kurt? Hi. Hey. Good Hello, morning. Kurt. Hi, I'm Marty Warwick. Uh, I don't think we've met, have we? We have not. Rick invited me to the group. Oh, well, happy Saturday morning then. You live in Huntington? Good morning, yeah. everyone. Morning, Scott. Go ahead, Kurt. So if we want to do some quick intros, we could run through that real quick while we're giving uh, another minute or so for folks to join. Kurt, I'm, I'm Robert Frenette. I'm the, the current president of WBAA. Uh, welcome to the group. This is our our once a month virtual coffee and EVs. Um, so uh, glad to have you with us. Thank you. Larry Harris, I was a founding member of the group. Larry, your audio is a little quiet. Mine is. I don't know what to do about that. I think if you just get a little bit closer to it, it'd probably be okay. I have a Tesla and uh, I had had a boat from 2007. Larry's audio is way down. Hmm. He didn't do an audio test before we logged in. Kurt, are you a current EV member owner? I am not. I am. Uh, um, I've talked to Rick in the past, and <clears throat> I'm looking forward to hopefully getting one in the near future. You have a reservation in on, or some money in on a VW ID four. I do. And I've got a reservation in on a um, Hyundai Ionic five, and uh, the first one was just delivered yesterday in California. And I now saw that. Yeah. The other 19 states that get it this year will be doing it soon. West Virginia won't be able to sell it until the end of next year. So I'll probably go to Maryland to buy. In fact, we were visiting uh, my grandson, as I think Marty knew, uh, this weekend in Maryland. And the Antwerpen Hyundai is one mile from my daughter's house. So we stopped in there and I, I met the man who I'd been talking to on the phone very nice people, uh, and he really is committed to understanding the EVs. I invited him to come to this as well, um, but obviously people are busy and can't always do it. Great, glad to hear we got some, uh, some more reservations and some different models coming in. It's gonna be great. <laughs> you know, I found out that Scott Hamilton is in the market for a transit van. Uh, some sort of large, larger type of uh, electric vehicle. How's your search going, Scott? When you say search, well, well you, it's, you said <clears throat> we've you're already about four got transit vans between myself. Yeah, and we've actually got. Um, <clears throat> I guess you call it a reservation. It's not in the traditional style. It was some expression of interest. It's got to be turned into an actual order. Um, but we've got a place in line, and I want to hear more about what the charging possibilities are going to be, particularly if Tesla is going to open the supercharger up to other models, because we're going to need to charge it. Uh, and it's, it's logistics. I'm going to get one of them in, try it out, and see how it works for essentially I'm uh, FedEx ground independent contractor that delivers essentially the last mile and um, it would make a lot of sense because we drive typically less than well around 50 miles a day uh, for the vehicles here in town and uh, it's about the capacity of one of the smaller step fans that you see delivering which are called p500s i, I so, saw the gm is coming the has started it. shipping a uh a small step van electric with a range of 150 miles and that uh, i'll take called lightning e-motors 
is shipping uh I started shipping a uh uh a small van with uh a range of 170 miles. Well, it's a shame the name kind of uh -huh. crosses over with the Ford truck. Uh, yeah, the Ford yeah. truck is what called the transit, right? No, the lightning uh F uh, no, no. lightning yeah, the Lightning Correct. E Motors is, and that's the name of the company. They're yeah. actually traded on Wall Street. Yeah, I saw this morning, and you may have too, where Cary, North Carolina, just put in their first Tesla police car, and it's going to be a patrol car, and they retained the entire trunk. And I put a comment on it that the Nitro had to give up pretty much that for communication equipment. Um, but this is a patrol car, not an interceptor car. So maybe they'll be able to keep the trunk or maybe they just haven't uh, upgraded it. To, but it was painted police of Cary, North Carolina, right near Raleigh. On that note, I saw Logan, Indiana had gotten the Model Y police car, but this wasn't like a, a custom one-off kind of deal. It was actually, they had were making it for production. So it's a prototype of a production police vehicle so that a police department can buy it completely already ready to go, configured and with all the components. Good move by Tesla. Yeah. Well, all had... right, well, who else do we got on with us? Uh, we got any other new folks, any other intros? So we got Thornton. I, Thornton. I, hey. I didn't get hands. Go ahead, Thornton. You're mute. I was just saying hello, listening. All right. Well, I think but we've got we've Kurt, got a pretty good representative. Yourself. Yeah, we were doing some introductions, Thornton. If you want to just introduce yourself real quick. Oh, okay. I'm Thornton Cooper. I live in South Charleston, and I have a 2017 Prius Prime and uh, plug-in hybrid. So I, I'm not one of the uh, fully EV people. So I'm, I'm get you there one day, Thornton. <laughs> it's still an EV. Well, I don't know. I mean, my philosophy is I bought my first car that was for me when I was uh, uh, 41, and and I I kept it uh, till I was 55, and then I then I got my first Prius, and I kept it till I was 67, and then I have this, and I'm 71. So usually I keep a car about 14 years or so. So I was thinking I'll be 81 maybe. <laughs> I don't even know if I'll still be driving that way. <laughs> maybe we'll have some autonomous battery electrics. Well, that's a... <laughs> you can drive, ride around in. Well, interesting. Yeah, that's a great yeah. lead into that. I also keep cars a long time average of anywhere probably around 14, 15 years. The longest has been 21 within the family, um, mostly Toyotas, but we've now got a Tesla 2018 long range. And we're up to about, I know Marty's more than me. I, we're up to about 61,000, but we put 9,000 miles on it coast to coast this summer with some family events and had no problem uh, finding charging as most Tesla owners know, and it performed wonderfully and um so it's ready for prime time evs that's i guess my model how many miles you have on yours marty 82 82 82,000. Yep. <laughs> and as soon as this is over i'm gonna put a couple hundred more on. i have to go to run over to lewisburg to pick up some parts for my son he, he, yep. he won an auction and marty and i live in south charleston kurt same subdivision, Thousand Oaks of South Charleston. And Thornton's not far from us. Uh, hey, uh, I Can thought you... we might mention a few, go over a few things, Robert, that have come up uh, in our conversations, uh, maybe our talk with- uh, Yeah, I've got an agenda. Office. I just wanted to see if we wanted to, if folks wanted to do the introductions. Okay. Um, okay. I do have a few things that we want to talk about. I haven't seen Robbie in ages. Hey, Robbie. He's on mute. Is my audio up yet? Uh, I, I adjusted it. Yes, yeah, now better. it is. Am I too better. loud? Is my too loud? Uh, you're fine. I, you're I, fine. I, have a, I have about half of a, uh, 
on my 18, I have about 42,000 on my 2018 Tesla. Ravi, we're doing introductions with, for Kurt, uh, who's a new attendee. You want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Ravi, can you hear us? Hmm. Oh, he may not have a speaker turned up loud enough. No, the audio turned up. Hello. We need a whiteboard to hold it right on it with a plastic. <laughs> A, med, uh, and a dry erase marker. Yeah, that's a video conferencing is always a challenge. <laughs> I might have his phone number. Let me check. Jim, you want to say a couple things uh, where you're at? And, I'm going to uh, do a chat. Hey, Jim, you want to do a quick intro where you're at and what you drive? I'm Jim Marve. I live out in the Canaan Valley, and uh, I have a 2019 Bolt. And I got a whopping, I see, it'll be two years come January, and I've got a whopping 13000 on it. <laughs> oh, and I just got my first electric bill after installing solar. It was $13. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah, that's my that's my bill, thirteen dollars plus some you know change, and that's what I've had since I I uh, had my uh, rooftop solar uh, effectively went in like the right before Earth Day in twenty twenty, and so that's what my normal electric bill is. But I got I know that Robert has much more stored up i've got two thousand more kilowatt hours stored up that's that's my credit against my bill how what's your what's your uh surplus now robert uh i pay five dollars a month for power to power the house and the car um with solar and i am right at ten thousand kilowatt hours of credit whoa <laughs> Almost hit ten thousand. I was like nine thousand eight hundred and you know something right there before. Uh, you you need two month. more EVs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Did we miss anybody else? Uh, Ravi, can you hear us now? Um, He's up there twice. Yeah. <laughs> he signed in with a second device, but neither one of them seemed to be. Well, here's Taylor. Talking about your minimum bill there uh, here at Appalachian Power, the minimum bill is like thirteen seventy five or something like right. that. Robert, who's your electric company? Uh, it's Potomac Edison, so it's under uh, Fir First Energy is the parent company yeah. out of Ohio. So yeah, different power companies, a little little bit different rules yeah. on the billing. Taylor, everyone, I. Texted Robbie and he can't right, hear us. Uh, he needs to select probably the right uh, speaker device um, in the app. You got to select the the correct speaker, uh, microphone, speaker or microphone. Good morning, guys. Sorry, I missed the first few minutes there. We we're just having uh, breakfast, so we made it down here to Florida. It was a long trip. Uh, there was a lot of accidents. Uh, I would have to bet the accidents are up this year. Man, it seems like it was nothing but accidents all the way down. <laughs> we're well, we're, we were doing quick intros, Taylor. So if you want to give us a quick intro about uh, where you're from and what you're driving. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I'm from West Virginia. I'm calling in from Florida right now. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, we got, the, we got the Model Y there a few weeks back. And... Uh, uh, so far, so far, really, really happy with it. Uh, been a been a member of the WBEAA for a while, even before having an EV, really. But uh, a bit of a bit of a solar uh, solar advocate, and uh, uh, of course a, a, a solar installation contractor. So kind of kind of really big into that, and then the EVs made a lot of sense. So. All right, we're glad you made it down to Florida. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, it took us about, uh, I think, t total total trip time uh, <clears throat> from uh, about about 9 p.m. to, uh, I think it was 4 p.m. yesterday, or whenever we rolled in. So, yeah, quite a quite a quite a long trip <laughs> but we sat 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 in a lot of traffic which was interesting because i know a lot of people's complained about you know all oh, evs you're if, if you get stuck in traffic your battery's going to run dead and then you're going to be stranded and then you know so, uh we got to we got to prove that theory uh wrong um, our our mileage actually went up uh or our, our our range uh we parked on the first at the at the first traffic jam it was it was just a dead stop pretty much it, it wasn't moving and then you know once it got the road cleared then then we just you know every everybody took off so it wasn't like a stop and go type deal but uh so we just sat there at, at 149 miles and after about uh, it was two and a half hours um <clears throat> but our uh during during that amount of time the range actually climbed up to 153 miles and then it stepped down to 152 whenever we we're able to take off so we uh as you know obviously we're, we were using some power but the car didn't show that we had lost any <laughs> any charging issues no um i will say that i'm not really uh thrilled with the charging the uh placement of the uh tesla superchargers the first one we stopped at at withville uh, back of a you know hotel um i was like well um i kind of i kind of got to go to the bathroom what, where are we going to make that happen you know um <clears throat> so we ended up you know charging and then we had to go to the gas station near the near the exit and actually take care of all that so yeah well, but, the, with bill is one of the original superchargers and it's yeah, not the greatest placement but they're getting ready to open a brand new one in bluefield uh, a v3 supercharger heard. that might be even open by the time you're back because it looked like it was pretty much ready to be turned on yeah you should oh, uh nice. you, you should nice. be able to use that hotel for uh 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 they'll let you use their bathroom that, at least uh, yeah so. yeah well i i kind of figured that um but uh yeah it was just dragging the kids and it, it was like three o'clock in the morning uh yeah we we're th thinking about dragging the kids around uh around you know through the lobby and everything i thought nah we'll just we'll just we'll just go to a gas station and um <clears throat> handle it that way but <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 i thought i, I thought yeah i didn't want to go pile in their lobby uh and i i tried the the, the back door but of course you know you, you have to have a key card to to you know be a guest to get in that the side door which i understand that makes sense but robert tell us what you and marty have been working on um yeah so uh so real quick summary uh as far as some of the things that have come up here recently the uh, our website uh, we got a contact from plug in america uh peter chipman which is their senior policy director for plug in america contacted us and was looking to have some discussions about you know needs and and you know things in west virginia as far as electric vehicles and ultimately, they were looking on looking at things that would interest Senator Manchin and his office in supporting the Build Back Better Act and the EV tax credits. So that's you know kind of the ultimate goal. But you know, trying to find the things that they thought would resonate with West Virginians and electric vehicles and Senator Manchin's office. So we had a couple calls uh, with Peter, and then also with uh, another gentleman, uh, and I forget what organization he was from. National the NR, NR, NRDC, yeah, N Natural Resources Defense Council, yeah, and then ultimately we had a call with a staffer from Senator Manchin's office yesterday, uh, kind of going through sort of you know a quick one page. We only had a half hour, but kind of going through the topics that we thought that you know they should be aware of and that would be of interest and resonate with West Virginians, things like tourism um, and people not avoiding the state. Um, you know, having fast charging available to get to and through the state, uh, pickup trucks for recreation and, I mean, electric pickup trucks for uh, recreation and contractors and, you know, those kinds of things, you know, trying to focus more on, you know, the, the, the working man, uh, you know, and getting away from this EVs are only rich toys for people in Silicon Valley mentality. Um, so, you know, trying to focus on those things. Marty, did I miss anything? No, you did. Uh, I did like Robert did manage to pop up his EV hole 
any charging hole. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the West Virginia shaped hole in the charging network for non Teslas where there are no CCS chargers in West Virginia. Well, no CCS chargers above 50 kilowatts in West Virginia. Yeah. Uh, and there's only three, I think, that are below 50 kilowatts. Well, even below, they're below 25. They're all 24. Yeah, uh, we don't even have the 40s, which is uh, 400 volts and 100 amps. We don't have any of those. So there's nothing above 24. Yeah. So, so I, I mean, I don't know what effect we'll have. You know, we only talked to one staffer and she was nice, but uh, impolite, but I don't know what impact, if any, our discussions would have with uh, Senator Manchin's positions. But uh, we, uh, anyway, we did what uh, PE, PIA asked us to do. And, and, um, and that was a good contact to have in the future. Uh, we yeah. did hear from him that uh, Electrify America has a secret map of future charging uh, locations. And West Virginia, supposedly, it's a secret, but <laughs> we're on the secret map. <laughs> and, <laughs> and they did offer, Peter offered to put, um, uh, you know, Senator Manchin's office in contact with Electrify America. And Electrify America said they would be willing to share some of their more proprietary plans with the senator's office without making them public um, about what their plans for West Virginia are. And so it was a good contact. I think Peter will be really helpful, maybe trying to encourage and motivate uh, Electrify America to locate uh, some more uh, high-speed CCS chargers in the state. I don't want to put Kurt on the spot, but I wonder if did, he has any did questions. You point, point out that it would... Go ahead, Scott. Go ahead, Rick. No, I'm, I'm just saying, I wonder if... Kurt um, did you mention to the staff or it used... Right, Scott, it used no. more coal <laughs> to generate the electricity that would be used with these chargers? <laughs> No, we didn't discuss coal. At, at, at Peter's advice, we stayed away from that subject. Okay, that's perfectly fine. He probably already knows it. Anything to line his pockets more? All right, so Rick, what did you have? <clears throat> We ought to get to this. Uh, I wonder if Kurt has any questions. I don't want to lose him, and we're already a half an hour into it. So I just wanted, in his looking around, you told me that you'd also driven the Mustang um, Mach E, and you didn't like it as well. No, it was. It wasn't a bad vehicle. Um, it was a two-wheel drive. Their low end battery. Um, the uh, I did <clears throat> like the fact that it had, you know, the one pedal driving. Um, which sounds like the ID4, the regenerative braking's not quite one pedal. Um, and I've not driven an ID4. I've made the initial deposit on one. Yeah, I think almost all EVs now, you can put in enough regen to have one pedal. I can come to a complete stop with my bolt. But yes, I'd heard what you heard about the ID4. Um, some people don't like one pedal driving, but it's sometimes I find in the mountains when you're going up and down hills a lot, the one pedal is very nice because it kind of automatically starts regenerating the minute your brain wants to come off the gas. Yeah, I love one pedal driving. You pretty much drive everywhere locally without hardly ever touching the brakes. I think Rabbi's on if you want to do intro. I, yes, I can hear and, and I can hear you all. Okay, great. Well, Ravi, you want to give us a quick intro, just what you're driving and, and okay. uh, where so you're at? I had, uh, originally, I bought a Model X and uh, drove it for about a couple of years. And um, it was okay, but it was a little bit cumbersome. So I, the timing was right. And when I sold it, I, I got a pr pretty decent chunk of money in the middle of all this crisis. So I ended up this September, I uh, well, actually, in March, I ordered... Uh, Model Y, and that's what I have, a black one, and just love it. It's just, uh, in it's a perfect size. Uh, it, the weight seems to be much better handling um, than the X, and it's um, very comfortable. The seats are very comfortable, just like the Model X. Well, that's great news. 
I have a feeling there's there's a why in my future somewhere down the road. <laughs> Same here. That's definitely uh, the direction I'll be headed. <laughs> so, are, are you going to get up to two hundred thousand miles, Marty, before you get rid of your walk of your of your S? Well, try this uh, again, Model Three. What, before you what get makes you think I get rid of the three? Just <laughs> or a second one. <laughs> so okay. So the other thought uh, topic, uh, Robert, I thought we might chat a little bit about, about is the new charging station in uh, Martinsburg Airport. Yeah, actually, I, yeah. I, I brought up a few topics on the browser here. So let me share my screen. All right. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Okay. Martinsburg Airport. All right. So. We learned this week that the airport up here in Martinsburg, which we where we've actually had the last two uh, National Drive Electric Week events um, in, in this area for the Eastern Panhandle occurred at the airport. Um, and I knew that this was coming, but it finally arrived. Um, it's called a beam charger. It has uh, solar panels on top. It has two uh, uh, EV chargers, uh, uh, EVSEs connected to it, and it has <clears throat> batteries in the base of it, I believe, or up here, maybe, I forget. But anyway, it has batteries and solar and electric vehicle charging, and it's all self-contained, so it uh, it doesn't require any grid connection or external, you know, conduit or trenching or any of that kind of stuff. Um, so that's kind of the appeal of it is it's a, you know, drop-in type solution. And I think, pretty sure this is the first one in West Virginia. Can they charge two at once or is it shared amperage? I think you can charge two at once, but Marty, what did you see the limit on the chargers was? Was it like four kilowatts? Four kW. Yeah, that's Which is pretty slow. slow. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's, yeah, I have a four kW charging in my garage and that's because I have a 20, it's on a 20 amp circuit. So it's really, really slow. Yeah, if you're used to more like, you know, seven, eight, nine, 10 K, you know, charging at home. Um, yeah, this would be pretty slow. And, and the, the solar panels, it's only, it's got 4.3 KW solar panels. So, uh, they claim they can charge up to 200 miles, a 260 miles a day. It can go into cars, but that must be counting their batteries too, because, because, uh, the 4.3 KW solar panels, that's only going to make you know, at the most uh, uh, 25 kWh a day, something like that. So it's it's not going to produce very much electricity. So. Yeah, and if it's a few cloudy days and the battery's depleted, uh, yeah, you might be out of luck. <laughs> yeah. How do they charge for the um, um, charging and how long are you allowed to park there? We don't know any of those policies. Yeah. Unclear. They have not listed it on PlugShare yet. I'm gonna. I know the the guy at the airport uh, that I communicate with to set up the Indu events. So I'm going to uh, contact him and encourage him to get that on PlugShare uh, and put in all those details about the cost and the charge and all that. Now I think this was a grant uh, funded uh, item. The airport also got two Mustang Mach E's uh, that were funded through a grant. So they've got two EVs and they've got this new charging station uh, that were grant funded. And Marty, did you see that these things, this beam charger ran like sixty, seventy thousand dollars 70000 I heard a number of 65000 which, okay. you know, you could, you could put in four to six uh, ordinary destination chargers for that cost. Most places. And, and you could you could put in solar you could have put in solar a, a nice solar array and had a couple EV chargers that were much higher capacity for yeah. probably less money. <laughs> yeah, guys, uh, what was the solar capacity on that installation? Four point three. I missed that. Kw. Okay. Twelve. Just twelve panels. Yeah, yeah. That's not gonna. That's not gonna offer a lot for an EV. I don't. I don't. I don't see, but it is it, it is an interesting concept, of course. But I, it looks like it can be done better. I think <laughs> it, it it's uh, uh, there are three options on the battery size between twenty two kWh and forty three kWh. 
Yeah. Which the, the the battery size would depend heavily on how much, uh, how frequent of of traffic the charger seems uh, you know is expected to see. Of course, I'm sure. Well, and I don't think this thing's going to see a lot of traffic uh, given its location. They'll probably use it mostly to charge the two EVs that the airport owns, uh, and you know maybe somebody who's uh, works at the airport or something. But then, you know, you got to think this is this airport is not like it's not a commercial airport, but it's, they don't have passengers really. Uh, they do more like there's a uh, National Guard facility here. So it's got National yeah. Guard stuff um, and they do some cargo uh, stuff in and out, I believe. And they're trying to do more of that. But it's not like a, you know, like Jaeger where you're, you know, you're going to catch a flight. Uh, the and, you know, they've got small planes. Uh, people fly in in their small planes and land and, you know, go to the cafe and fuel up and then take off and, you know, go to their next airport and little Cessnas and things. So it's that type of airport. So there will be people there. They can they can kind of micromanage the uh, system and, and, you know, whenever it needs to whenever whenever it, it needs to be discharged, you know, to accept more sunlight then they can they can kind of take advantage of that. That's yeah. Cool. The only thing I, that I, I mean, given the cost, I mean, there, there's plenty of electricity available here. You know, this type of a setup would have been more appropriate in a place like a park or somewhere where you didn't have easy access to electricity, but you needed EV charging. Um, but as it is, it's in a location where they had ready access to the grid and they could have put in the solar. Uh, so that's just, it just seems like maybe they could have used something like this in a better location. Yeah, like a Hatfields McCoy's trailhead or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I look, I look forward to whenever they have the uh, a popular uh, EV Jeep, and then we can we can do these things uh, in uh, on uh, remote uh, Jeep trails. I think that that would be really neat. <laughs> well, be on that really on that topic, use, use case anyway. <laughs> on that topic, I will switch over to this I had pulled up. So what do you guys think about uh, the first Hummer EV deliveries? The more the better, more the merrier. It's gonna be a pricey pricey beast. I think it's supposed to run about 120,000 uh, to start out with. Um, but you know, I mean, it's, you gotta start somewhere and you know, Tesla did the same thing with the Model S, you know, start at the high end and work your way down. Um, and it is a certainly uh, getting into a different class of vehicle where there's not a lot of uh, EV competition uh, in the truck and SUV arena. So one of my brothers is waiting for delivery of a Rivian. Yeah, another uh, another uh, group that's gotten into the, the pickup and SUV um, you know, deliveries. So we'll, yeah, Rivian's going to be interesting to watch. Uh, and, you know, some of the stuff GM and Ford are doing. It's going to be uh, interesting. The truck or the SUV? The truck. Yeah, that's the one that's been released. He's only had a deposit on it for about three years, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't have to wait more than three more years for it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Is Rivian a, uh, made in the United States or it's made somewhere else? No, it's US. made in in Illinois. They they purchased what used to be a Mitsubishi Chrysler plant in Normal, Illinois. And they just and speaking of Rivian, they also announced. I don't have a page up for this, but they also announced they're building a five billion dollar additional facility in Georgia. So they're they are uh, have announced that they're investing in a, a whole new production facility being built in Georgia. Oh, Robert, I had a um, couple items on my agenda, if I can take two or three minutes. Sure. Um, for mostly, um, for the Chevy on Jim and I, uh, this third, the second recall software uh, told you to limit your charging to 80% high and only uh, at no lower than 30. So the I didn't do that. And I called the concierge and said, what does this create a problem? If I have a, a, a fryers, they said, no, if you're going to only charge it to full twice a year for travel, that's fine. So lately I got uh, another letter for the third software update, which allows you to charge only to 80 and, but you can go down to zero. And I read on our Chevy form that this means you go to the back of the line for the battery. 
So I called the concierge number, very nice lady. And she said, no, that's a rumor. You don't go to the back of the line. It's just totally by VIN number. She said, uh, let me look it up. What's your VIN number? She said, well, you're not, they're not ready to give that one out yet, but I'll call you. I'll let you know every two weeks what the status of. So Jim, I thought that was very interesting. The second thing is when I went to the course out in Utah uh, by at Weber State University, I learned some things that I had, had learned wrong. I knew there were four levels of charging, AC one and two and DC one and two. And I thought DC one, which only goes up to 48 kilowatts was zero to 48. And the DC level two is 48 to 400. And I was wrong. Uh, Professor Kelly said, no, the DC level two is zero to 400. And, it, and the, what defines one and two is the pins that they use on the CCS plug. If they use pins one and two for DC current, just like they do AC, then that's DC level one. And it's limited because of the size of those pins to 48 kilowatts. And there are none of them in the United States. So all the ones that are DC are in fact DC level two. But to call them all fast charge, when some of them are 24 kilowatts and the highest AC is 19, doesn't make any sense. So uh, I'm not sure what it is. The second thing we is- We'll be calling it DC slow charge. <laughs> yeah, well, I suggested that too. Anything under 50 should be DC SC, but uh, I don't know, that won't take off, I don't think. So anyway, Robert and I, uh, Robert, I asked him to pull the video off where I had that all wrong and uh, we did, and I don't know if I'll be able to fix it and put it back up. We're just uh, not necessarily worth replacing. Well, and it's also, I think, interesting to note, you know, when we talk about charging standards, of course, we're thinking about the United States, but, you know, there are a lot of different, you know, CCS2, CCS1, depending on whether you're in Europe or, or the U.S. Uh, China has its own standard. Japan had its own standard. And now Japan and China are supposedly collaborating on a different standard that's going to be an extension of Chatamo. So we're still in this time frame where we've got multiple standards for high speed DC charging, you know, and ultimately, you know, that needs to probably shake out um, between all the different standards. And on and DC level two, the plug uh, doesn't use pins one and two. So to reduce friction, many of the manufacturers have taken the metal contacts out of pins one and two, and others have taken away the plastic posts altogether. So if you look at your CCS plug and there's no pins one and two, uh, that's what they did. Uh, other thing on my list here is we just got back from a, a 800 mile trip to Baltimore and we left from here full and we stopped at Astorg Auto. We were very nice to let us charge um, and at 24, uh, maybe a little bit high, but 24 kilowatts, a little, maybe a little bit higher. And we ate at Applebee's and by the time we got back, we were ready to go. We went then to the Harley Davidson shop in Clarksburg and they also have a low level 24 kilowatt uh, DC charger. And we were there for maybe 50 minutes and we walked around and visited and got warm. And then we got all the way to Deep Creek Lake. So then uh, on the way back, we stayed in Morgantown and I just wanted to mention we stayed at the Hampton and there were four plugs and three of them were filled with EVs, a Jeep, a plug-in hybrid, a Tesla, and me. So three out of four plugs, they said, we're, we're, we're gonna have to go to six plugs pretty soon. So that was very interesting. Uh, last thing is that um, Marshall University is building a brand new business building, mostly funded by Brad Smith, who's the new president who donated 25 million. But Dr. Gilbert, who's the current president said, make sure when they do the electrical workout for this building that they thought about electric vehicle chargers. So they contacted me again to say, help us decide what we need to tell the architects to do. And we're in the process of gaining some more information, uh, like whether they're gonna have two plugs or four and, and it, but it's for students and visitors, it's not for faculty or for the fleet. Uh, and lastly, I called Walker Chevrolet and Nitro and Mid-State in Flatwoods. And they're all, they both been certified as Chevy repair people. None of them have been um, trained yet to do the battery replacement, although they probably will. Uh, but they're all putting in that same uh, DC level two uh, slow charger that we had at the other. So there'll be uh, several more along the way for to have the, uh, the same one that's at Yes Chevrolet will be at 
Walker, Chevrolet, and a, and a, a Midstate. And Midstate was going to give up selling EVs altogether, and then they saw the writing on the wall. So they've gotten recertified their technicians, and they're just waiting now for the DC and AC chargers to be put back in. All done. Okay. Cool. Well, I mean, it sounds like well, the, you, it may be slow charge for CCS vehicles, but at least there might be some more options uh, popping up. Well, let's hope that uh, that the state actually comes through next year <clears throat> with uh, some CCS charging at Tamarack and at the state capitol. Have you heard anything more, Rob Marty, from anybody on those? The you know, only thing I heard is that uh, that s somebody in the purchasing department, the the Department of Transportation, had uh, decided to go sole source. And they had identified one vendor that they wanted to put go all around the state, and the purchasing department uh, killed that idea, and are making them go back out for uh, uh, to competitive bidding, and and uh, so they're having to write a spec, and and I did provide Kelly some information on the difficult time Maryland has had with crappy. Uh, high-speed uh, DCFC chargers. Maryland uh, has had a couple of different vendors that have really failed. And Electrify America early on had that, that problem too. So Maryland had ribbon cutting ceremonies. The governor was there and all this stuff. And all those chargers that they put in have, don't work. They're all out of service. So, yeah. so I said, you guys better write a good spec and here's some of the problems people have seen. So uh, uh, we'll we'll see what happens, I guess. Uh, I'm not really surprised on the purchasing thing. I mean, because I, you know, I spent my time in state government, and it was virtually impossible to justify a sole source procurement. I mean, yeah. it had to be so cut and dry, and you had to get letters saying there is no other option. Um, so yeah, I'm not surprised about that. And if it has to be competitive, it's going to take a while. Yeah, so I, I, guess I would it say will not be. July. Q2, it will not be Q2 2022 would be my guess. Yes. Yeah. We plugged into Electrify America in Hagerstown for about a hundred miles worth, maybe 20 minutes. And um, the, I, you started with a credit card and I've done this before. In fact, at that exact same charger and boy, it showed up on my bank statement within, you know, 48 hours, it was in there this time, no charge. And I called Electrify America and they said, well, there was a $50 hold put on. We took that back off, but as far as I know, it was a free charge. So I, I've got no, no charge from Electrify America for that. How many of those were, were working, Rick? Because I've heard some bad things about the, some of the EA stations here locally. That a lot of them. I didn't test the others, but the reason I went there was I went to a premium outlets in Hagerstown, mm -hmm. and they have an EV go, and it did not work at all. It just kept cutting out after three or four miles you know, 15 minutes, 10 minutes of charging. So I left there and drove a half a mile to the EA, worked perfectly first time. Now the EA chargers did have a problem with a CCS plug that it was so heavy that on the Chevy Bolt, it would disconnect and you had to hold it until it actually started charging and then you could let go of it. This time I didn't have to hold it at all. I just plugged it in, put the card in, bingo, it started charging. Yeah, it's still, I think it's still a little hit and miss with CCS charging um, and other vehicles and compatibility and issues. Uh, it's getting better. So maybe by the time EA gets a station in West Virginia, we'll have the latest and greatest and it'll be better. And I did the one that near you at Stevens City and it worked um, first time around. Cool. All right. Well, I got one other news item I wanted to, to throw out because I know we've, we've bashed them for a while now. Did uh, everybody see, you see my screen? Yes. All right. Yes. So Toyota looks like they're finally, finally going to do something with battery <laughs> electric vehicles. Uh, so I don't know. What's, what's everybody's thoughts on that? Well, I hope they do some of it in Buffalo. Yeah. Yeah, definitely for West Virginia's sake. Yep. And I don't underestimate Toyota when they actually do make a switch like this, that they'll put a lot of effort into it and rise up pretty quickly. That's been, you know, when they get going, 
they moved. So finally, yeah, they did right. see the light. And, the and I guess because they were waiting on solid state batteries was their, <laughs> their line for a long time. So I guess they're basically finally admitting, I guess, solid state isn't going to be here, I guess, soon enough. So that they're going to have to use more traditional uh, battery architecture. Didn't I hear that Buffalo was already <laughs> already making or will be making the transmissions for EVs? Uh, there was something was about transaxles. Yeah. Uh, Pardon? If, if you see something like that, please uh, forward it to uh, our uh, discussion list. Uh, you know, we have that email list. You could yeah. put it on. No, it uh, seems to me I saw that sometime within the last six months. What do they make there now? Engines Transmission. and, and transmissions. transmissions. But... It started with it, the it engines, though. Specifically, that said EV. Hmm. I'll see if I can find it. That's great. Yeah, Kurt should know that we have a WV of, of this group to be on that mailing list. But oftentimes, many of us, when we have something that we just feel would be of value to share, we, we email it to that Google group and it goes out. How many people do we have now, Robert? About 110? Yeah, a little over 100. Yeah, about that. Yeah. So Actually, I think uh, here's the article I think we're talking about. Let me paste it in the chat. It's on the Toyota website, but uh, they're talking about transaxles um, being made for electrified vehicles at uh, the Toyota facility in Buffalo. Yeah, electrified vehicles is, is a code word for hybrids. Yeah. Yeah. Dedicated production line of hybrid transaxles. There you go. Which I, don't, I don't think it was for full EVs. This was just probably making stuff for like the Prius Prime and the uh, RAV4 Prime, things that, you know, they're hybrids. I got an email from uh, Toyota a couple of days ago, and they actually were pushing a fully EV vehicle. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was full. Yeah, that's at uh, BZ4XYZ, whatever the heck. It was a weird. It, it was all, yeah, letters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's the new vehicle that they've announced that they're going to start shipping, I guess, in 2023, maybe, or late 2022. Um, and then it's also the same platform that Subaru is using. Uh, Toyota and Subaru collaborate a lot. So Subaru's new uh, EV called the Solterra is based on that same platform. Basically, it's the same vehicle with some cosmetic changes. Well, if I get the Hyundai, I'll take Kurt for a ride. And if he gets the VW ID4, he can take me for a ride and, and I'll let him give you a, a report on it. <laughs> well, you, you know, as as being a longtime member of this group, uh, when our meetups, the only thing you saw was uh, Model Wait, S's what? for the doctors. and a boy or a girl? Who? Oh. I was trying to ask Siri for a <laughs> Keep going, Marty. Uh, you know the engineers that owned the bolts and the and the and the doctors owned uh, Model S's. It's such a wonderful thing to see the wide varieties. People talking about Volkswagens and Hyundai's and and uh, talking about a new GM product. That this is just wonderful to see the wide spectrum of consumer choices coming up for EVs, uh, just, uh, it just says we're seeing the success we wanted to see. Now we just need to get the plugs in for uh, around the state. Exactly. I've taken our brochure to the Volkswagen deal, Moses Volkswagen and the Kia that has the Nero all electric uh, there in Barbersville and, and put their pictures of their salesmen in it and their vehicles and uh, they're each going to hopefully let any customer that comes in that's interested in that know that we exist as the WVEAA, and maybe we'll get some more interest in people that have vehicles other than Teslas. Well, to say Teslas have been, it's, you know, with the charging infrastructure the way it is, it's, it's hard to own anything else in West Virginia and, and travel long distances easily. I know, Rick, you do it. But it's like a lot of folks wouldn't put up with doing what you do. <laughs> I've got a good co-pilot. 
There you go. <laughs> Speaking of the Ionic 5, um, the sister vehicle of that, the Kia EV6, actually, I like, the, I prefer the styling on the Kia. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen that one. Yeah, that's nice. They share the same, yeah, they share the pretty. same platform. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and most of the specs are basically, you know, the same, but it's just, you know, different styled vehicle uh, with different probably interiors. Looks nice. Yeah, Hyundai and Kia, uh, definitely ones to watch. Um, they are really taking it seriously. The Koreans have taken it more seriously than the Japanese. So, uh, And they've got a very sophisticated new electric vehicle platform. So it's going to be interesting to watch. I'm not uh, saying I'm, I'm basing a choice on this factor, but my license plate does say electric blue. And only um, only the uh, Hyundai has a blue model, and the Kia doesn't. <laughs> I'm getting the blue one, so I don't have to change. It doesn't make any sense to say electric blue on a red EV. <laughs> you could get a different plate there, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> no. Electric red. And you're and you're and you're and you're from Marshall. It should be electric green anyway. <laughs> yeah. well, I got the Marshall plate in the front. Okay. There you go. Hey, I'm right, going to sign off, guys. I got to uh, hit the road. But it's great to see everybody. Kurt, it was nice to meet you. And, nice to meet uh, you. Uh, have a happy uh, New Year and Merry Christmas and and, and all that uh, for everyone. Yeah, but real quick before you leave, Marty, just I want to do a couple more things that were on my list, just real brief announcements. Um, so our next meeting is... January, our business meeting, uh, group meeting is on January the 8th at 9 a.m. Um, and we also have elections coming up. So I haven't received anything from anyone, uh, you know, uh, volunteering or seeking office in any of our positions. Uh, Rick is stepping down as a secretary, so we do need someone to kind of step up into that role. Um, at that meeting, we're also going to be kind of discussing sort of like maybe what we envision for the future for the structure of the group. So uh, do try to mark January 8th on your calendars and we'll be sending out reminders. And if you would like to volunteer to do anything for the group, uh, feel free to send me a note. Yeah, we, we think we need uh, more representatives geographically so that we have somebody in the Morgantown, Fairmont area, someone in the Parkersburg area and in, in, uh, uh, Eastern Panhandle, as well as uh, our Charleston Huntington concentration. Canaan Valley. Yeah, and Canaan Valley. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's Eastern Panhandle, isn't it? No, no, it's no, it's not. No, no, it's, not. <laughs> it's right down <laughs> the high elevations of West Virginia. <laughs> yeah, well, I just turned eighty, and I'm greatly involved in our homeowners association, but I've already given them notice that I'm dropping out of all of that kind of crap at the end of this fiscal year. <laughs> I nominate Jim for secretary. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> you know, Kurt, I, you better not sign off or we're nominating you for an office. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, well, my career with IBM, I was the techie side and management finally got real smart and, and uh, partnered me with another guy that had absolutely no use for anything technical but was a fantastic administrator and they and they put us as t as uh, the leads on many many projects and fortunately i never had to get into management because of that <laughs> you're here right, for guys. that huh Already that, said, here, here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I always avoided going Good into Good for you, Jim. <clears throat> One thing I would suggest is when, when Robert sends out the announcement for coffee and EVs, we should all post it on our private Facebook pages, share it from the group page, so that all, because, I mean, there's people even in some other states, friends of mine in Ohio, that don't even know that we have the coffee and EVs ditto, and I'm, I'm, guilty myself of not always putting it on my push, sharing it to my personal page. All righty. Guys, well, it's about four minutes till any...